Have you ever wondered what fund groups do to earn their fees? We've all seen the slick marketing, but what really goes on inside Britain's investment managers? I'm Sam Benestead from Interactive Investor, and for the second part of our Day in the Life series, I'm going even deeper into the world of fund management. Today I'm meeting Matthew Henley, a portfolio manager at Invesco, where he manages money for pension funds. Come with me to find out how a pension fund is really managed. Hi, Sam, nice to meet you. Hi, pleased to meet you. Welcome to Invesco. Thank you very much. Let me show you around. Thank you. Matthew, thank you for having us in the Invesco London office. We're here to find out what the day in the life of a pension fund manager is really like. But before we get into that, can you please tell me a little bit about your job at Invesco? Sure, so my name is Matt Henley and I'm a fixed income fund manager at Invesco based here in, in London. Um, so my focus is on managing investment grade corporate bond portfolios for a range of different client types and that includes pension schemes uh, as well. Uh, most of the portfolios that I run are global in nature, so we're investing in UK, European and US dollar bond markets. I've been at Invesco for just over two years, um, which has um, kind of really flown by, I must say, um, but I've been in the industry for 13 years. And you're managing money for pensions, that's a big part of your job. Are these defined benefit pensions, defined contribution pensions, how, how do they work? Yeah, so we manage money for um, a range of institutional clients of which pension schemes are um, certainly a big part of that. That's both um, DC, defined contribution, which is what most workers have these days, but also defined benefit or final salary schemes um, as well. Um, the main difference between them is that DC schemes tend to invest in funds, a range of funds um, or pooled funds. So that would um, be effectively where most retail investors would be sitting um, as well. Uh, so there isn't too much of a difference between kind of retail and the DC side. I think most of the difference comes on the on the DB side of things. So DB schemes have a guaranteed element um, and therefore fixed income plays a very important role in terms of preserving the value of that fund and generating income to pay pensioners in retirement. So the key for those types of funds is that liability matching element. Um, and therefore, uh, as in fixed income, we work very closely with our solutions colleagues. So we have a team of very clever people in solutions, often these guys are um, ex-actuaries um, and they work with the client to define the optimal asset allocation, so the mix between bonds that sit with us and other asset classes, um, but also they manage that liability uh, matching aspect as well. So they will then allocate money to us within fixed income, give us a set of parameters that allows us best to, to, to match those liabilities as they come due. Um, and then allow us to do what we do best, which is to go out and pick uh, good bonds. And on to what a typical day looks like then. So what time are you getting up in the morning? How are you getting into work? When does everything start here in the office? Mornings for us as fund managers are um, very busy times, probably the busiest time of the day. There's lots of news to digest. So there's the um, overnight news in terms of how markets are traded in the US and Asia important economic data releases um, and also company news. It's not long before new issues start to hit our market. So this is companies raising new finance in the bond market. So we have to make a decision for our clients, including our pension clients, whether we buy these new issues or not. Uh, we have a morning meeting in the morning where us as fund managers sit down with our client portfolio managers. We discuss funds, markets, ideas, but also the business side. Have we got any client meetings coming up? So morning's very busy. Um, I think we deserve our stroll at lunchtime to go out and get some lunch, but we need to make sure that we're back by 1 p.m. because that's typically when we get notification of fund flows in and out. And then we move to the afternoon, which is where um, or when the US markets uh, open. That's when we will do the bulk of our US dollar um, trading. Our kind of larger strategic meetings where we want to hear insights from our US and Asian colleagues will typically be done in the, in the afternoon because of, uh, of time restrictions. So once they are done, then you're kind of getting towards the end of the day. So that kind of gives you a feel for what the average day looks like, um, if there is such a thing. And new issues, this is where companies turn to you to try and raise some money. How many new issues would you participate in during a typical week and how many are available to you? And what's the process 
of actually buying those bonds. We'll get uh, you know, hundreds of billions um, of these new issues being printed in, say, the European market um, per year. It tends to be quite seasonal, so companies don't, aren't typically allowed to issue bonds during blackout periods ahead of, kind of earnings releases, for example. But um, a month like January or September is, you know, we're ex always expecting heavy supply of these new issues. There is a conversation that's had between the credit analyst and the portfolio manager. Um, the credit analyst is the one that owns the, the fundamental credit view of the company. So they're the ones that are really analysing the company and um, on, in terms of its credit worthiness. There's then a conversation between the credit analyst and the fund manager to ascertain whether we think there's value in the bonds. Then we have to work out which, uh, which clients this trade idea works for. Typically we, we want to um, have a, a fairly um, constant allocation across those clients, but sometimes there'll be situations in which a riskier client can maybe buy a little bit more than, than another client. We then get to a point where um, the, uh, we have a kind of a monetary amount that we want to buy, and then it's to the kind of the execution and the, and, and the dealing side. So you're working with credit analysts, you're working with traders. Are there any other key parts of Invesco that you work with regularly? Maybe economists or perhaps the equity fund managers as well? We co-manage portfolios a lot of the time. So um, I work in the investment grade team within fixed income, but we certainly co-manage um, portfolios with other teams within fixed income. So it might be that we manage the investment grade portion and our high yield team manage the high yield bond exposure. There's collaboration within fixed income. But there's also collaboration at, with other asset classes as well. So <clears throat> there's certainly portfolios that we run where we're kind of co-managing with our equity colleagues, for example, if there's a solution where a client needs both, both of those asset class exposures. The other team that we, um, that we work very closely with uh, that I've touched on is, is the solutions team, particularly for DV pension clients. Credit analysts are, play a hugely important role in terms of feeding in ideas and that, um, that understanding. Um, but as fund managers, we have to have a reach really across the organisation. So we're often working with client facing teams as well. So that's sales, distribution, client portfolio managers. Um, we like to meet with cur current clients and prospects and trying to, trying to grow the business. Um, but also we work very closely with back and middle office teams as well who help us with the operational day to day management of, of the fund. So we have to have a very kind of broad reach as, as fund managers across the business. And you're in the London office, but Henley is also a key office for Invesco in the UK. How do you interact with the business over there? We will travel between the offices. It's not too far on the Elizabeth line these days um, and collaborate very closely with our fund managers sitting there. We also have analysts sitting across both, um, both offices. So we'll be reliant on um, analyst views in the Henley office and, and vice versa. So there is a lot of um, kind of collaboration and we work pretty closely with each other. But we're, both offices are part of a broader global team. So we are very much you know, working closely with our, our colleagues in the, uh, in the US and Asia. And we really benefit because we run global portfolios, we really benefit from their um, knowledge and expertise of their local markets and that kind of boots on the ground credit analysis to help us with the access and the understanding for companies that we're investing um, into from London in the US and Asia. And what time does your typical day finish then? And do you have to do events after work sometimes? And are you meeting clients for dinners? How does that work? Typically, you know, leaving the office on average between maybe half five and, and six o'clock. We do do things after work. And so it might be um, conferences, events, um, dinners, um, that does happen. Um, we do travel as well. So I've been to uh, Scandinavia and Italy this year to meet uh, clients and prospects. But we've got to find the right balance between meeting clients and prospects and spending enough time at the desk to manage the portfolios for clients. So that's why we do rely on local sales teams and client facing teams to, to do a lot of the day to day interaction with, with clients to allow us to manage the portfolios. And when you get home in the evening and on the weekends, what do you get up to? So I'm, uh, I'm quite a sporty person, an active person, so I'm uh, a member of a, a CrossFit gym. I do yoga and spin classes and running. Um, I like my sports, so I play five-a-side football. Um, I play golf very badly. But apart from that, I'm, you know, I'm a fairly simple guy. I just like spending time with my friends and my family, you know, eating well, drinking well, and spending kind of quality time with them. Matthew, it's been really interesting hearing about your day. Have you got time to show us around the office? Sure, let's do it.
So where are we now then? So this is the um, investment floor of the office. So we have um, our fixed income team here. So that's a, a, a mix of fund managers and credit analysts and uh, client portfolio managers as well. So this is David Todd, who heads up our credit research team here at Invesco. Hi Sam, nice to meet you. And you. So what is your job then and how is it different to Matthews? So I head up our credit research globally and my job is to make sure that we're generating good investment recommendations and underwriting all of the corporate issuers uh, around the investable universe for our portfolios. So what if the portfolio managers disagree with your credit recommendation? How do you decide what to actually invest in? Uh, well, the portfolio managers decide what's most appropriate for their funds. We put forward ideas. If they don't agree with those ideas, then we'll have a good conversation to try and bottom out what the reasons for that disagreement might be. And how many types of companies are, are you covering? What is your universe of research? We cover about 2,700 corporates globally. Uh, and we generally find that we cover a, uh, about 80 to 90 percent of the main market indices and that gives us the best opportunities to generate alpha for our client portfolios. And in terms of doing your research, is it mostly done from a desk here in London? What data sources do you use? Are you out on the road at all? How do you form a view of a company? The research role is, is relatively desk based in this informational day, day and age. Uh, things come in through lots of different digital channels but it is also important to communicate with companies and uh, we meet management teams uh, through one-on-ones, roadshows. Um, but we believe in having our analysts as close to the companies that they uh, cover and analyse as possible. So we've got teams regionally in Asia, uh, in the UK, covering Europe and the US as well. David, thank you for sharing that information. Nice to meet you. And you. Matthew, thanks so much for showing me around. It's been really, really interesting. No pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed it. Great. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. Take care.